You know what I told the lady at the Burger King drive-thru? I said, do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? I'm an award-winning YWC journalist. I'm the Schleg Daddy. And shame on you if you haven't heard of me. But there are a lot of people that do know who I am. And you know what you're going to do? You're going to give me 10 chicken nuggets for $1.49. And then after that, because I am the man, everybody else in line behind me, you're going to give them 10 chicken nuggets for $1.49. That's what you're going to do. Because I'm a schleg daddy, and I'm an award-winning YWC journalist. Oh, yeah. You better believe they did. They gave it to me and everybody behind me online. What happens when you're an award-winning YWC journalist? It is. People take you seriously. You can move mountains and molehills. Oh! So we've been live this whole time. I'm sitting here made to look a fool. An award-winning YWC journalist and my own crew leaves my balls blowing in the breeze. God damn it, we're professionals here. It's time to start acting like it. Welcome, everyone, to what promises to be a banner moment in the history of OTRS Central. All throughout 2017, I've been on a search, a journey, a quest, with one goal, one mission, and that was to hashtag make wrestling fun again. And it's been a battle, and it's been a struggle. And frankly, the Schleg Daddy's been on the losing side of it. Because some of you might say that it's really hard to make wrestling fun again because it is so bad. But the truth is, the only thing that I really truly care about is that I want talking about professional wrestling to be fun again. The stuff's been bad for years. Now, all throughout this decade, professional wrestling has kind of been in the toilet. But that didn't stop us, preclude us from having all types of fun. What happened? I, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened to this channel. I don't know what happened to me. But something has to be done. Something will be done. Because ultimately, when talking about professional wrestling is fun, it can help make wrestling more fun than it really is. And as much as anything else, having fun equates to feeling like a kid again. And believe me, as a man at 36 years of age who is closer to staring down the barrel of 40 than he is even 30, let alone his 20s, I assure you, I cherish every single chance that I possibly can to be able to feel like a kid again and have an excuse to feel like a kid again. So it's been a constant search to, to, to figure out what to do. It's been a constant search within myself, outside myself, to say, what can we do to change things? What can we do to start to turn things around again? To get that ball rolling, if you will, to make wrestling fun again. And, and I come back to one line. It's kind of a blast from the past. Since 2010, we've been entertaining ourselves while you watch. And in that constant search, it dawned upon me it was like a big beacon of light, the spotlight shining down on me that said, this, the ways of the past are your ways of the future. And it's so true. It's so true. Looking all this time, trying to figure this out, the answer was staring me smack dab in the face the entire time. And with that, because what once was cool is now cool again, what is old is now new because we've run out of original creative ideas, frankly. I want to welcome you to the new Off the Rope Show. What is the new Off the Rope Show? It is going to be a weekly video series housed within the OTRS Central Library. The Off the Rope Show is back, baby! So once again, I could use the old catchphrase. Since 2010, we've been entertaining ourselves while you watch. The topics could be all things wrestling and internet wrestling related. What's it going to be? Who knows? You're going to have to tune in every Sunday to figure it out. Sometimes I'm going to be serious. Oh, could even be me. 
guarantee you a lot of times it's going to be silly. You bordering on the stupid. But there is one goal. One goal. The number one goal of this program, of the new Off the Rope show, is to always be entertaining. This is the start of a new path, a new way, a new direction for all of you, and for me too. And with this big announcement, this big reveal, this big moment, mark it down on your calendars. Sunday, June 4th, 2017 was the moment in time that once again, you were able to hashtag make wrestling fun again. And that's what we're going to do. And by God, we're going to do it. Now, what are we going to talk about on this first episode of the Off the Rope Show? We're going to talk about how YouTube has decided to blacklist professional wrestling like we were black wrestlers trying to get a world title shot in Vince McMahon's WWE. And we'll be back with more about this after this short commercial message. I think that went pretty well. I mean, I'm the Schleg Daddy. These people know me. They love me. And most importantly of all, they respect me. Like the fine people of Flint, Michigan. They sent me a hundred of these bottles of tap water. And they said, enjoy compliments of us. It's strange though, the box had a Quenzuocha written all over it. I didn't really know what that meant, but, and then, the, and then apparently the slogan was, um, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So this must be some strong vitamin water. What? What do you mean we're still on? I kicked it to commercial. What does this mean? No, this means run the goddamn commercial. I'm sorry, folks. God damn it, we're professionals here. Oh, now they're ready. Now they're ready. Here's the commercial message. We'll be right back. Finn Balor's Super Wrestling Hero Action Committee Click is responsible for the content of this advertising. I gotta tell you, Roman Reigns represents everything wrong with WWE today. He's just another muscle-bound freak for the kids, the girls, and Vince McMahon to geek. He's the number one reason, number one reason, the product is in the state that it's in. Number one! He is solely responsible for driving away hordes of fans. The number one primary sole reason this is happening. The one. Because one John Cena was enough. A Samoan version with lesser Mike skills is just an even worse extension of that level of suck. Believe me, bigly. And he also acts like he doesn't need us and that he's better than all of us. Well, screw him and don't despair as there's hope, a bright future ahead. Fergal Devitt is the future of professional wrestling from his legendary time in Japan where he was the one true rock and roller who went on to become the face of the greatest faction in wrestling history, the Bullet Club. He has entertained the world one kick at a time now is Finn Balor, the time for the demon has come. A man of the people, by the people, and for the people who appreciates each and every single one of his fans. Take that, Roman. He is the one who must win the fatal five-way at Extreme Rules. He is the most worthy, credible, and deserving challenger for Brock Lesnar in their upcoming title match. It is the one true best and only option for WWE because we can no longer stay silent. This inaction will only lead to WWE's downfall. It's time to join the movement and deliver the Roman Empire a well-deserved two-footed coup de grace. I am Marcus Smart and I have approved this message because one John Cena was enough. And Finn Balor is arguably, arguably, the best motherfucking wrestler in the world. Some of you may have noticed some changes within YouTube over the past two months or so. 
No, not fixing the discrepancies in view counts, because that's a constant issue. No, not sitting there and fixing the glitch that will sometimes delete subscribers uh, that didn't ask to be unsubscribed. But again, YouTube kind of looks at that and says, eh, you know, it kind of keeps things fun and random. No, not fixing where they suggest videos you don't care about, uh, you have no interest in, because they've always done that. Just for a wrestling example, when you click on a John Cena sucks video, in no way, shape, or form does that indicate that you want your entire homepage to be plastered with pro-John Cena propaganda. Give me a break. Now, those aren't the changes we're talking about within YouTube over the past two months, unfortunately. What we're talking about is a significant decrease in the number of ads and types of ads on the YouTube platform. And you might have noticed this in different types of videos that you may watch where you used to see ads every single time. Maybe you'd see some pre-roll ads. Maybe you'd see some ads that scrolled on the bottom of the screen during the video, mid-roll ads. You've seen a significant reduction in those across a wide variety of YouTube genres. And in particular, if you follow wrestling companies and wrestling talkers, um, you know this has been a widespread issue as well. And in particular, if you follow those same wrestling companies and wrestling talkers on social media, you know about it because they're complaining about it all the time. You know complaining, wrestling's favorite thing to do, fans, wrestlers, executives, doesn't matter. Everybody complains about everything. It like, makes us feel warm and fuzzy inside. Uh, so what happened? What caused this? Um, well, let's take a step back and understand that in the past, you know, you've had changes over the years to YouTube and the partnership program. You used to have to apply for it. You used to have to have a certain amount of this, a certain amount of that. And then it just got to the point where YouTube kind of got uh, carried away with it and said, everybody potentially can monetize a video. We don't care. So in theory, in theory, you could expose your penis on camera for educational purposes and get paid. If nobody reported it, if nobody flagged it, if nobody from YouTube caught it, you could show your cock on camera and get money for it. Now, for some of you, that might indicate just the teensy weensy insy bit of a little problem. And YouTube seemed to agree. But lo and behold, it still happened. And it would still keep going. You would have advertisers, uh, big corporations advertising and all types of videos that you really wonder would they really want to be associated with said videos and the simple answer to that is no and due in large part to an article written by somebody with the Wall Street Journal you know <laughs> the, the, the Wall Street Journal because of course they always do great work right <laughs> when they're not denying climate change, when they're not pushing for open borders, never forget that they ultimately, once and for all, are the newspaper for Wall Street. And as a result, they spend much time over many years defending said crooks and shady characters on Wall Street. The Wall Street Journal, after an article written talking about the types of ads being shown on certain types of videos, specifically in reference to alt-right videos, now you get kind of this knee-jerk reaction where all of these questionable and undesirable YouTube videos that were getting ads uh, now were being placed under the microscope. And, and here's the thing, this is like this was something new. This is something that's always been known. This is something that's always been there. And frankly, Google and specifically YouTube, they didn't give two flying flips about this because they were making money. They were making a lot of money. So why the hell would they care? If nobody's going to police them, if nobody's going to hold them accountable, if nobody's going to ask questions about it, then why the hell would they care? Because they don't. They didn't. And believe me, they still don't. And what's even more questionable about this whole matter is apparently these companies, and in particular in a lot of cases, these big massive corporations, didn't bother to do the research to see what type of videos the YouTube platform actually has and hosts and what type of content is within said videos that could potentially see their advertising splattered all across them. 
I mean, Jesus Christ, this is like buying stock in a company just because you see the name and you're like, I like the name and not bothering to do the research to where you come across the fact that this is a company whose research is all about the advocating of using AIDS to control the population of puppies. Because you didn't research, you're giving puppies AIDS. That's how ridiculous this is. But apparently, these big companies, and smaller companies too, all these different types of companies across many different spectrums, didn't bother to ask the tough questions of what type of content are my advertisements going to be associated with? What types of videos, what types of customers, what types of people are going to see my ads? What am I ultimately going to be associated with? Nobody apparently ever bothered to ask the freaking question. Nor did YouTube ever care to proactively address the question. So, once this started becoming a major talking point, what happened? What did companies start doing? They started pulling out of YouTube left and right. Small companies, big companies, because they understandably said, hey, we were stupid for not asking these questions before, but until you, YouTube, get this straightened out, until you get this figured out, we're not doing anything with you. And we're going to pull out because we don't want our carefully cultivated corporate image, because, yeah, so many corporations have good images, right? <laughs> we don't want that negatively affected by being associated with the type of content that you carry on your site. That's how bad this thing got. So what did YouTube do as a result? They started retroactively going back and removing ads from questionable videos. And they did this across a wide spectrum, a wide variety of video genres. Um, you know, kind of similar to how some wrestling fans will go back through their social media accounts and delete any old positive things they had to say about John Cena and Roman Reigns. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at you, Deluxe Man. I know it's you, and I know you've done it before, and I've got proof. But then YouTube went a step above and beyond. YouTube classified entire groups of types of videos as non-advertiser friendly. Non-advertiser friendly, meaning that once you're put into that bucket, YouTube doesn't care who you are, doesn't care how many views you get, how much traffic you drive to the site. They have chosen to not run any advertisers associated with your channel, with your videos at all, no matter what. Period. So as you can imagine, this negatively impacts a lot of content creators. And especially in the professional wrestling world, where professional wrestling related videos have been given this classification, you can understand why a lot of people are upset about this. You can understand why people feel gypped by YouTube on this why they're angry at YouTube, why they're frustrated at YouTube, because ultimately they kind of should be. Because ultimately all of these content creators came into the YouTube platform understanding one set of rules a certain way, and then of course, as somebody like a YouTube is bound to do, Google is bound to do, they're going to change the rules on the fly and a lot of people feel like they're getting the shaft. If it wasn't a big deal before, why the hell would it be now? How are you going to get mad at me when ultimately it's your fault? You know, kind of like if you're a married man, how your wife always yells at you for something that you didn't even do. She comes home and bitches about her day and how bad it sucks because it's your fault, even though you had absolutely nothing to fucking do with it. That's the type of shit we're talking about right here. So it's not a surprise when professional wrestling and all the people associated with professional wrestling and the different wrestling companies get blacklisted and put into a category of being non-advertiser friendly with our propensity to love, to bitch, moan, and complain, it's not a surprise that a lot of people are going to be angered and upset about this and want to try and do something about it to change it. I get it. And I'll be right back to talk about why this sucks and what type of impacts there really are. Ladies and gentlemen, the dick storm is back. Baby, did you miss me? Of course you missed me. How couldn't you miss Tricky Dick Baby, who comes here, who spits the truth with his one-eyed monster of justice. And of course, for those of you that don't remember, 
I'm the long lost cousin of the cowboy James Storm. Woo! How could you forget me? Now, there's one thing that's bothering me. Is what's happened to this channel? Since when did OTRS Central become a WWE only club? I mean, WWE is terrible. They don't have James Storm, therefore they're terrible. Yet the Schleg Daddy don't even watch Impact Wrestling. TNA. Now is Impact Wrestling. For Christ's sakes, they changed the name. They got the Cowboy James Storm. WWE don't. And yet the Schleg Daddy doesn't watch. They have a Black World Champion. Something the Schleg Daddy should be down for. He should be down for that cause. Yeah, of course. The Schleg Daddy doesn't watch. Dixie Carter no longer owns Impact Wrestling. Yet the Schleg Daddy still doesn't watch. And what I don't understand is he watched it from the very beginning, day number one, the weekly pay-per-views, baby. And yet he's chosen to turn his back on his wrestling lineage, his wrestling heritage, and he ain't watching Impact Wrestling now. And it's a shame. It's a damn shame. A crime shame. And the dick storm ain't gonna stand for it, baby. If the cowboy James Storm is in impact, then the Schleck Daddy in OTR Central should be talking about watching and reviewing Impact Wrestling, baby. We need to change this. We need to fix this. And it seems like with Slammiversary right around the corner on July 2nd, it'd be the perfect time for the Schleck Daddy to start giving Impact Wrestling another chance. And in fact, here's what we need to do. We need to get a hashtag going. That's what the kids do on social media, right? Am I right? We need to tweet to OTRS Central and hashtag give impact a chance. Hashtag watch impact Jeff. I don't care if you tweet one. I don't care if you tweet the other. You should tweet both. The bottom line is we have a chance to affect positive change. And the Schleg Daddy needs to come back home, if you will. And OTRS Central needs what once was a big part of this channel's portfolio, if you will. All about, of course, baby, watching Impact Wrestling. That's right. Hashtag watch Impact, Jeff. Hashtag give Impact a chance. And if all else fails, if that doesn't get the job done before Sunday, July 2nd, could somebody please politely inform the gentleman in Richmond, Virginia, that the founder has come back home. To impact wrestling. Woo! That should get the job done. Ride the dick stone, baby. It's good to be back. You know what? I gotta say, it's great to see the dick storm back, isn't it? And he just might be onto something. Hmm. We'll see. But anyways, moving on to the topic at hand. This whole concept of YouTube making professional wrestling related videos non-advertiser friendly and basically painting the whole entire genre of entertainment with one big, broad brush, flat out sucks. Because content providers, once again, across the spectrum, are getting fucked because ultimately YouTube fucked up. Google fucked up. And that's all it is to it. Is it the content maker's fault? If their videos touch on certain unpopular, controversial topics, and YouTube didn't have it figured out well enough uh, to who's getting advertisements, what type of advertisements are being shown. If they were just doing carte blanche across the board, didn't care, we're just trying to do it and maybe tailoring it based off of what people are actually clicking on, what people are actually viewing and watching on the site. Yeah, content providers should be pissed because they're right. Because what YouTube is doing is bullshit. Instead of taking responsibility, instead of actually trying to fix the issue, it's more of a knee-jerk, reflex, reactionary move to sit there and say, well, we can't figure it out, we don't have our shit together, and henceforth, as a result, screw you. It's exactly what it's like. And in particular, what we care about, professional wrestling, there are a lot of wrestling companies that are feeling the pinch on this because they're losing an important revenue stream. Like even WWE, even though with their 16 plus million subscribers and being one of the most watched channels on the entire YouTube platform with their kind of exclusive partnership deal 
with YouTube, they're still feeling a pinch. You're talking about a company that could make four or five million dollars a year just off of streaming those videos on YouTube, showing highlights of their shows on YouTube. And that's money that could potentially be lost to them. And even from my own research over the past two months, clicking on certain WWE videos at different times, some of them show me ads, some of them don't. And frankly, it's probably more of a 20% to 80% split, 20% that have ads, 80% that don't. So imagine if you're WWE and based off of the nature of things, your overall audience size and subscriber base continues to grow and you're seeing potentially a third, a quarter to a fifth of the money um, from what you once did and you haven't changed a thing. Even though they're a big corporation, that's money that comes in handy for a company that profits you know, maybe 30 to 40 million a year, that's a huge amount of money. That's play money. How much does it really cost you to upload that stuff to YouTube? So it was one of the easiest, most efficient revenue streams that the company had. Similar to TNA and ROH, and surely their audience base is much smaller, but especially for them, looking for any way they can to potentially make money, the loss of advertising on their wrestling-related videos is most certainly going to be a pinch on them too. They could be losing and probably are losing thousands of dollars a month. And independent companies that don't have the revenue from television deals and don't have the infrastructure for merchandise and licensing and so on and so forth, they're really feeling the pinch because they're losing a great source of important revenue. Like I think it was Beyond Wrestling tweeted out shortly after a professional wrestling related content got put on the non-advertiser friendly blacklist with YouTube. Talking about that they get about $4,000 a month from it. And if they don't have that ad revenue stream, it could significantly impact the bottom line of that company and how they're able to function going forward. And think about that. To go from you know making potentially as much money in terms of net in your pocket from putting your videos on a website as you do from actually doing live events to now you could potentially be taking away a third to a half of that company's overall revenue. How many companies are going to be able to survive that? That's horrible. So wrestling companies, through no fault of their own, frankly, are taking it up the ass here. Just like YouTube wrestling talkers are taking it up to the ass too. Now, to, to, to which you might say, well, don't they like it there anyways? Uh, to which I'd say, uh, perhaps, uh, especially in their mother's basement. <laughs> or like how Dolph Ziggler's middle school girl hairstyle indicates he indeed likes to take it up the keister. But ultimately, all jokes aside, this is anything from a laughing matter. Because in this particular case, it's like the little guy is the catcher and not the pitcher if you get my drift. And speaking personally, OTR Essentials feeling the pinch from this too. Just to give you a little insight in terms of this channel and talking about revenue. Back in 2016, this channel made about $1,500, give or take a couple here and there. So not great, you know, an average of a little less than 150 a month. But probably if I cared more and I put better content on here, probably could have made two to three hundred dollars a month based off of the size of the odd subscriber base that this channel does have. But that's not exactly chicken feed. I mean, that's fifteen hundred dollars that I get for just coming here and sitting on my ass and recording some videos. That is the money that I can pay a bill like my cable and internet bill with each month. It's what pays for the WWE network. So when somebody says, well, cancel your WWE Network subscription, why the hell would I when YouTube and the money that I make from YouTube pays for that and pays for other things? I don't need to because it's not technically coming out of my pocket. But looking at this year, through May 31st, this channel has made $475. And now some of that you can attribute to a lack of overall content, uh, not having the greatest viewership on certain videos. But... Even with that still, you know, there were still periods of time where I didn't do videos in 2016. And think of the pacing here. For a 12-month span, this channel made about $1,500 in 2016. 2017, five months in, almost halfway through the year, I'm at 475. So it is a significant decrease. 
that is directly associated with YouTube's decision to blacklist professional wrestling related content. So yeah, I feel the pinch. It kind of sucks. I'll live. I'll survive. Um, but it sucks not to have that revenue stream. I mean, I can't lie. But imagine how some of these larger channels feel and how badly they're getting screwed. Like you look at what culture, you know, or, or as they're called, what culture WWE. They worked hard to cash in on another company's registered copyrighted name and trademarks. Damn it! But in all seriousness, you're talking about a channel with over a million subscribers. These guys that have started their own wrestling promotion. If I'm at under 14,000 subscribers and I'm making X amount a month, you know, somewhere around 140 to 150 a month, imagine what culture with a subscriber base that is close to 80 times larger than mine who uploads much more content where you might get two or three videos a week out of this channel, you might get two to three videos per day out of them with perhaps 20 to 30 times the viewership on each of their videos compared to mine. You're talking about those guys at what culture, like them or not, losing hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. That's not chicken feed. That's significant money. And again, through no fault of their own. Somebody like Joe Cronin, close to 50,000 subscribers, Surely he's making several hundred a month, if not a thousand a month or something. Now, granted, to which I would say he makes sons. That's cool, but fuck you. Why don't you spread the wealth, you piece of shit? I'll tell you this much, though. You make those sons, you'll never be in the breakfast club. But obviously he's got to be feeling the pitch, and he's been letting everybody know about it. JD from New York, which if you've ever asked yourself the question, what would happen if Rusev and Tasteless Tony T had a child, what would it look like? I present to you JD from New York. But with that said, this is a guy that has almost 80,000 subscribers. I can only imagine the pinch that he's feeling. Steven Larson, going in raw, whatever the hell that's supposed to mean, wrestling's version of my two dads, with an audience that I could only dream of ever having, frankly. Imagine how much they're losing out on. And the Solomonster. You know, the ladies love the Solomonster stud muffin. And that's a fact, Jack. You could look it up. But again, all of these guys, what culture, Joe Cronin, JD from New York, wrestling with regret. You know, what happens when you have Jim Cornette's looks and Todd Pettengale's personality and appeal. Steven Larson, the Solomonster, uh, all these other guys and so many more that I haven't even named. These guys legitimately got onto the YouTube platform were able to make money off of it, haven't changed anything about what they're doing, haven't done anything to make themselves any more or less advertiser friendly than what they used to be. And now because of shit that is completely out of their control, completely out of their control, that they had nothing to do with through no fault of their own, have now been blacklisted basically. And that is bullshit. Which of course is why you see all of this talk about how unfair this is, all this complaining by these guys and their fans and their viewers talking about how this is horse shit. You see change.org petitions being started up, trying to rectify this glaringly, gapingly bullshit decision by YouTube. You can understand all of it. But my ultimate thought is, is that while people's hearts are in the right place, their minds aren't. And this is one of these instances where we need to remove some of, some, some, some of the emotion from this. Stop using our hearts and start using our goddamn brains. Because there is something you can do about it, but you gotta think. And you gotta think this one out and think it well. And I'll tell you what my thoughts on this are after this short message. Everyone out there, my name is the Blue Borton. Fuck the gender mahal. The real WWE champ is Randall Keith Orton. This is a crime against humanity. And oh, the outrage. I am ready and furious. Time to turn another page. Since WWE wants to not hear our voices, we have to make some very, very tough choices. 
So here in this moment of time, with the return of the Off the Rope show, there is only one direction for where we need to go. Marvelous Mark, Metal D, and of course my man Mr. Rout. We need Can't Heat back. We need it bad. We can feel it in our loins. Yay, Randall Keith Orton. And Mr. Rout, give me funny feelings in my groin. We need Can't Heat back. On the Off the Rope Show, let the Schleg Daddy know that this is the way we have to go. Yay, yay, candy. I suppose this channel could use a little bit of a rise in its temperature. I'm just, I'm just saying. But anyways, kind of piggybacking off of what I previously said and trying to tie it together. There's a couple other things I want to throw out there. Number one. If you're mocking YouTubers and making fun of YouTubers for this, fuck you. How much do you suck? To the idiots that are sitting there saying, well, maybe you should go out there and find a real job. Ding dong, dumb dick. If somebody pays you money and for a lot of these content providers each month, a lot of money, more money that they would get for actually working a real job, who's the dipshit here? There are people that make thousands, hundreds of thousands, and yes, millions of dollars per year doing freaking videos. Think about how silly that is and how awesome that is all at the same time. It harkens back to when I was about 19, 20 years old and I was working for MCI at the time. I was in the telemarketing business and I'd have people that I'd call that would sit there and tell me, you know, why don't you get a real job? When people ask me out in public where I work, they would tell me, ha, 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 why don't you get a real job? And I would say, whoa, let's play big bank, little bank, bitch, and I bet I win every fucking time. Back 19, 20 years old, I'm sitting there netting every two weeks, 2,500 to three stacks. Netting. Not gross, net bitches. And these fuckers sitting there working, making eight, nine, ten dollars an hour, having to work two or three jobs just to pay their goddamn bills, are trying to tell me that I don't have a real job? No, apparently you don't have a real job because you can't afford to pay your fucking bills. Real jobs are in the eye of the beholder. People working in a suit and tie have every but the real job as a professional athlete does. If they pay you for it, it's work. And to sit there and shit on somebody and say, maybe you can go get a real job, is not even good troll shit. It's just dumb, idiotic troll shit. It's just stupid. With that said, if you were a YouTuber who's pissed off about this and caught off guard by this, and you were only invested in the YouTube platform as a source of revenue, then shame on you. Then you have nobody to blame but yourself. You are a moron. For example, I... For all the talk and bluster and bullshit about it, having sat there and created merchandise, having sat there and created a website, having sat there and done this or do that, uh, improve my networking, do all these different things that could potentially generate additional sources of revenue to where losing the revenue from YouTube, frankly, wouldn't be that big of a damn deal. That's on me. That's my ass. That's my fault. And for any of you that sat there and trusted YouTube to solely provide you income for what you did. And frankly, you deserve it. If YouTube merited that you deserve to be paid for it, you deserve to be paid for it. And frankly, your viewers, your audience, what the hell difference does it make? Because they weren't paying for your shit anyways. But if you didn't branch out and you didn't do other things to diversify your revenue stream portfolio, then shame on you, that's your ass. And don't expect me to feel sorry for you in that sense. Diversification of your portfolio is key. Merch, other sites, websites, doing uh, paid sponsorships, doing product placements, all this other crap. And as so many people have done, donations, because let's face it, a lot of YouTubers use Patron and PayPal and all this other shit uh, to get donations from people. And while we're on the subject, while we're on the subject, I seem to remember five years ago with the Off The Rope show that we were the talk of the YouTube wrestling world, and we got a whole lot of shit, death threats, hacked accounts, and every fucking thing else because we did some stupid fucking idea of a newsletter. And yes, it was stupid and was dumb, and we should have never fucking did it. But how stupid do I feel now? How shitty do I feel now? And how shitty do so many people that shit on that idea five years ago look 
when all this freaking, as we call the e-betting, is so widespread throughout to where I'm one of the few that doesn't fucking do it. So let me get this straight. Newsletter bad, and even with that, the newsletter where we made, what, $200 that was used to buy items that was used for the 2012 Dan Gable Wrestling Museum uh, Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame weekend in a silent auction to where we tripled the money and gave it all to the museum. That was evil and that was bad. But all of these people freaking using their Patron and everything else or Patreon or whatever the hell it's called, PayPal and all these other GoFundMe bullshit, that's okay? Hey, look, I've never had a fundamental issue with people asking for donations and stuff because it does take time to do this. And, you know, people want to have some type of compensation for it. There's nothing wrong with wanting to get paid for what you do. And we shouldn't shit on people that want to donate and help out and so on. I just don't understand what was such a big deal about it five years ago. And yet a lot of those people probably are just fine with all these other guys being able to do it now. Like, what in the serious fuck? I await your apologies in the comments section below. Because it's horse shit. But ultimately, apparently, that's my ass. Shame on me from not doing a Patreon or whatever the fuck else, a GoFundMe, a PayPal, or whatever the hell else you do. Apparently, I've been missing out on the fun. So credit to those guys that weathered the storm, that did that shit, because, again, they diversified their portfolio, which is what is important. And when you look at this most importantly, you know, it, it's, it's one of these things where it, it feels like in a lot of ways the little guy's getting trampled on. And that's kind of honestly the way it is. You got to look at it the bigger picture. YouTube, Google, they created this problem. They're trying to react. They're trying to make sure that they keep uh, the big sponsors, in particular the corporate advertisers, and their big money in the platform as that's ultimately better across the board. And there are, unfortunately, some positives for this as a result, because if you are part of one of those video genres that uh, is not being blacklisted, being classified as non-advertiser friendly, there could potentially be more money to go around um, because there are fewer channels to disperse the ads. So ad placing becomes at a little bit more of a premium, means you might be able to see YouTube, Google command a little bit more money, and so as a result, uh, the rich kind of get richer. Which is kind of funny because that's how the world works. But most importantly of all, tying into this shit of doing petitions and pissing a fit and bitching and moaning about it on Twitter, ultimately, here's the reality news flash ding dong, dung dicks. It's not going to make a bit of fucking difference. It might make you feel better about yourself. It might make you feel like you're loved and wanted to see people respond and say, yeah, you're right, that's bullshit, that's terrible. But who cares about that? You got to get something done. Because ultimately it isn't right. But sitting around and just bitching about it isn't going to change anything. It just isn't. And while a petition sounds great in theory, oh, we can get 20, 30, 40, 50,000 uh, signatures. And that's going to make Google really take a pause and look and YouTube take a pause and look and say, hey, we're wrong about this. Off of a platform that gets the type of traffic that they do, you walk up to them, to their headquarters, and hand them a petition with forty or 50,000 signatures, they're going to fart at it. They're going to say, who gives a shit? And you know what? If that's what you're pinning your hopes on, that's exactly what the fuck you deserve. You get what you deserve. That's the type of treatment you would get because you would deserve it. Stop being so damn emotional about it. Stop being so naive about it. Stop being so fucking foolish about it. If you want to change this and you want to affect real positive change, then you got to play dirty. You got to use the YouTube forum, the YouTube platform against YouTube. Like, for example, this video about this topic could potentially provide information to those that previously did not have that information. Comments on ad enabled videos specifically talking about how this genre, who could be thought of as offensive, if not more offensive, than professional wrestling-related content has, video, has ads on their videos, but we do not, spreading the world in general. 
talking about how this is bullshit, trying to reach out to content creators and other genres because eventually it could affect them as well. So it might not be their issue now, but it could be later. And it's incumbent upon people, if this is such a big issue, to make it a big issue for others because the larger you build the network, the larger you build the resistance to this, the more effective it can potentially be. Use the YouTube platform, use social media to demonstrate the hypocrisy of what gets ads versus what doesn't. I have done this on Twitter on several occasions, and I will continue to do so. And every time I do, I make sure that I at YouTube or Google. Imagine if you blew up their social media accounts, because believe me, as big of a corporation they are, especially an internet-based company, they have entire departments in their infrastructure uh, devoted specifically to social media. Instead of talking about some stupid fucking petition, start tweeting out the hypocrisy of it. Potentially talk about, you know, how offensive this is to you, that you feel like you're being discriminated against. you got to play that card. you got to play that card. Threaten litigation. Start throwing out the feelers for a potential class action lawsuit because there are other genres that are going to feel like their free speech is violated, fair or not. They're going to sit there and say that they're being unfairly discriminated against, and you might have a greater point. Because when I go on YouTube and at random times, I can see news videos talking about terrorist attacks and those news sites are able to monetize those videos and get advertiser revenue for it. But me talking about Jinder Mahal being WWE champion may or may not get an ad associated with it. And that's more offensive than a company profiting off of a terrorist attack. We got a serious fucking problem with the priorities with YouTube, with Google and with this world as a fucking whole demonstrate that hypocrisy like how deluxe man's i love sammy Zayn in his chess cubes game video can get ads can make money and yours doesn't to which you might ask deluxe man doesn't really have a video titled that on his channel does he i don't know does he does he does he the real trick is you don't know as crazy and ridiculous as it sounds, you also, let's admit it, believe there's a chance that he could have a video titled just that on his channel. Just saying. But if your spark bond together and petitions are not bonding together, get as many people to use the YouTube platform as possible, to make as many videos about it as possible, to spread the word about it as much as you possibly can. Demonstrate and point out the hypocrisy of what YouTube is doing, of what Google is doing. Don't pontificate, don't bloviate, <laughs> rally, organize, and potentially look to litigate because YouTube and Google can hide behind terms of service all they want. But if you get to a point where they are potentially discriminatory and you can prove discrimination and you can prove hypocrisy in the standard, then you've got a case there. Furthermore, in the meantime, as you work through this, maybe there are some other things you could do as well. Try changing your channel tags. Anything wrestling related, get rid of it, especially if you're a bigger channel. Get creative in your video titles. Try as little as possible to actually reference professional wrestling. Avoid wrestling thumbnails. You know, instead of using um, potentially copyrighted images from the shows themselves, and unfortunately sometimes this channel does it too, instead of using images like that, show your own ugly mugs. It's a crazy thought. So crazy, it may or may not actually fucking work based off of the way YouTube's algorithm works in terms of trying to sort through metadata and sort through some of these things. If you don't have channel tags and video tags relating to professional wrestling, if you don't have video titles that directly indicate they are professionally wrestling related videos, if you avoid wrestling themed thumbnails, you may just have a fighting chance. And if that doesn't work, then maybe you organize some type of YouTube boycott. You think that petition's gonna work, it fucking isn't. You sit there and get enough people across many different uh, genres within the platform to boycott the platform for a day, two days, three days, you send a message. You send a very powerful message. Maybe you start using other sites. You use the VidMe's, the Daily Motions, or whoever else does this shit. Maybe somebody will be smart enough to create a real viable competitive to YouTube. Just because they're so big and they're such a monster, 
doesn't mean that they can't be usurped from their throne. And to assert that anything other than that is possible is completely and totally ridiculous. But people have got to get smart about this. Stop whining and crying on social media. Stop sitting there and just creating these petitions that aren't going to do anything, that aren't going to go any fucking where, and do something about it. Use YouTube against YouTube. Get other content creators across many different genres, in particular for some of you that are influential, that have a certain size of audience, the what cultures of the world, the JD from New York, the Stephen Larsons, the Brian Zanes, the Joe Cronins, all of you dudes. Instead of complaining about it, instead of whining about it, Grimm's Toy, whatever the hell show, band together. Start working this like a freaking pyramid scheme, multi-level marketing, if you will. Sit there and get your people to talk about it, and then have them talk about it, and then have them get people to talk about it, and then have those people that got people to talk about it, have them get other people to talk about it, and then you got everybody buzzing about it. If you use your influence, because you do have influence, you can potentially affect positive change. Or, honestly, and unfortunately, this is also true, it may not matter. YouTube may not change their ways. Or, if YouTube starts to lose money, they could just randomly change it one day without anybody doing anything. They must may just decide enough is enough and it's time for a change. And that may very well possibly be what ultimately happens. Who knows? But if you're going to get angry, be smart about it. If you're going to want it to be changed, then do something smart about it. And it's so frustrating to see so many go in a exercise ultimately of futility, one big circle jerk where we all feel good about it and nothing fucking happens. Be smart about it. For those with massive channel sizes in terms of their subscriber base, their viewership base, use that. Use YouTube against YouTube. Don't use Twitter solely against YouTube. Use YouTube against YouTube. Because I promise you, eventually, they're going to notice. Think about it. Be smart about it. Because either it's going to matter, or it ultimately isn't going to matter. But one thing I promise you, if you continue to go down the path you are, it will be nothing but wasted time friction, and emotion. And it's that simple. Use your minds, people. The power of minds can do incredible things. And that's about all I got to say about that. So thank you for tuning in to this inaugural episode of the new Off the Rope show here on OTRS Central. And as always, since 2010, we've been entertaining ourselves while you watch. Thank you and goodbye.